I thank you so much for being here and just taking the time this afternoon to sit and hopefully relax a little bit and take your minds to a place of creativity and um, where all of us can feel good. So thanks to the Concord Arts Association and Catherine for organizing this group, which is awesome. Um, great number of people, as she mentioned, uh, we are going to raffle the piece that comes out to my hands today. And one of you will be the winner. Um, hopefully you'll like it. <laughs> so we will start by um, going through the materials. I hope all of you grab a little bit of everything you had around your house because um, that's collage. We just paste and glue everything we have around the house. So we're gonna start by going over the surfaces that you could possibly use to create a collage. And um, here I have a little canvas, which is a six by six, the one we are going to use today. And I already pre um, prepared mine. I primed it in um, red wine color, a little bit of gold too. So this is the one we're gonna use today, but it does not limit to that. You can always use other surfaces like masonite board. It's a board that I also um, primed while I was just listening and waiting for all of you to gather. I actually am very interested in the surface on the back of this, which has a lot of texture. So we'll see, that's another option. And then um, the fast go for it option is just paper bags from you know, the market. Just cut them, glue a little three, four layers of them and get a nice surface even to play with your kids or you know, to make a little note reminder, put it on your refrigerator. Um, scissors, obviously, any kind, the, the ones that make you feel comfortable. Um, brushes, use one that you don't care for. You don't care about it anymore because it's gonna get glue on it and it usually gets ruined. Any kind, any size, obviously, depending on the size that you're working on we will um, use this glue school glue is fine i um any kind i have tacky glue too and this is my favorite one the one i usually use for um the collages i make which is a glossy medium because i love everything glossy so i have uh, this is the kind i use from liquid tech a professional brand and obviously um magazines i love the fashion ones but any magazine will do um here i got like two samples and i'm going to be using these because uh we will just play along okay so any questions on materials we're fine okay good so now Today, um, as we announced, we're going to work on a floral collage. So I want you to just focus your mind now on what would be shapes that we could find in flowers. And at this moment, I'm going to turn my phone towards my easel. So I want you to just think of how many shapes and things we can find in nature and what we are going to go after today in this little canvas that we are going to use is something like this we'll grab uh, something that will make a base and then we will think about some of the stems or foliage of the flowers and then we're going to start thinking about rectangles or triangles or we're going to work on circles but we're never going to cut any flowers out of the magazine so don't think flowers if you see one 
turn the page. We don't want those. We want to look for colorful things, pages. That's going to be our material. And then we're going to cut shapes. So today, it just occurred to me this morning that we're going to work with a lot of circles and that we're going to create a spiral. And we're going to look for a vase. Any kind, any shape, and I'm going to show you later. We're going to get some foliage, stems, and then we're going to get our flowers here. Maybe two or three of them will do. Okay? Are you all with me? So use a little container like this and just pour some glue on it. I will do for now. And then on another container, please have a little bit of water if you can. And this water, we're gonna use to dip the brush a little bit and then use the glue. And then we're going to just apply it on the canvas. If it drips, don't worry, add a little bit more glue. And we're gonna start just cutting a little bit of paper here and there. So let's see, here I have some of this paper. And I think most of you are familiar with just throwing paper on a canvas. So that's what we're doing here, randomly. And we do not have to cover the whole surface. It is up to you. Anything works. Right. Is that I'm using tissue paper for now. It's these two kinds. You know, this is from um, the tissue paper that you get from presents, mm -hmm. um, any kind. I, I'm just using this for now. I also have this very old vintage paper. Um, it used to be a sewing pattern, I think. I'm going to use a little bit of that one here. And again, we don't have to cover everything. Applying more tissue paper. And Catherine, I hope you um, also can see the chat just in case anybody has any questions. I'll be happy to. Okay. And right now, while I was um, talking to Catherine and Pat, waiting for all of you to arrive. I was just scratching, doodling on a tissue paper. So I'm gonna put it here. Okay. This is a little bit of another doodle that I just finished while we were talking. So I'm going to just throw it in there. Then I'm going to use a little bit of another piece of paper. Yeah, this is Marie. When you have the crinkles in the tissue or whatever you're putting down, are you trying to smoosh them out flat or do you leave the like texture of the crinkles from the brushing on? I leave them. I usually love it because that creates some texture on my collages. So I just let the paper be. But if you feel like you want to try not to, that will be okay too, Marie. On the side, if you see that your paper is flowing over the side, um, yes, use your brush and just bring it around. 
see like, like I'm doing right here. Okay, so this is the stage where you probably start overlapping papers and then you, you start getting this effect. This underneath was very, very black. And now you're getting papers, tissue paper overlapping and creating another shade of the color and even shape. Okay. There are also two ways to apply tissue paper. You want, you want, one of the ways is just wet the surface with the glue first and apply the tissue paper. Or find a surface that is not that um, saturated with glue and then you apply the paper and it will um, come on a more opaque surface, if you wanna say that. It's not as transparent as if you lay it down over a wet surface. So this is coming along. I'm gonna tie this end here with a little bit of this green paper. Somehow I just love this green square paper. I just got it from a wrap of a sandwich and I thought they were really cute. Um, and I just saved them. Any questions so far? Well, yes. I mean, you're working on what's probably going to be, I guess, the background, correct? Yes, correct. And this is going to be the background. So that's all we are doing now. We're not worrying about anything else yet. Okay. So are you thinking about values as you're choosing paper to put on the background, or is that not a concern at this stage? Not a concern at this stage. Okay. And again, it all depends on what is your feeling when you start working on these collages? What do you want to say? Um, the only thought I was having right now was not to make the full surface so dark, but leave all these spaces in light. And again, once you have done it, you can twist it around and find, you know, the corner that you really like something you don't want to cover or something you don't like as much, then you can cover it. And I need to take a little bit of time here because um, it needs to dry. I don't know how yours is going, but mine is really, really wet. Anna Molina, when you're working at home um, for this right now where we're at right now for the drying, can we use a blow dryer to um, help? Absolutely. If you have one handy, you can just do that right now. No problem. I have my fan on and I have another one um, near my chair. And those have been helpful right now. And um, right now, I want for you to get your magazines out. And I'm going to put this a little bit back. So I have, um, let me put it this way. And we're going to pass. And I'm going to show you what am I going to be looking for to make our vase. So on magazines, these little bottles of perfume are very easy to find, like this one, see it? So this could be one option. But then another option that I really love are all these skirts. You, you see how they have like a V shape? Once you cut them, they could easily become a vase. Like this one over here, it's a skirt from one of those models on a magazine. But I'm gonna use it this way so it becomes a vase. 
So I want for you to search and make you think. You can either look for a bottle of perfume, a bottle of nail polish, a basket, anything you find on a magazine that will become your vase. And just cut it. So I found all these purses. See how cute they are? And they have the form of a vase. And you can all also shape it with your scissors. This one up here, I think is really nice. So I'm going to make a vase out of this one and see if it works. And then you can do a little try and say, oh, which one will work will this? be working or do I want this one and keep looking do I want the bottle which one do I really want to do okay here I found um one of this a side of a glass uh, the glasses of a lady and this could be two but I really like this one somehow I think I'm gonna go for this skirt Okay, I'm going to keep my skirt there. That's going to be my base. Do you all remember how I said we're going to work on circles here? That's what we're going to look for. We're going to create circles and then we're going to create a spiral. Like, um, let me show you. Okay. So for now, I'm going to look for a color like this pink. <clears throat> and we're, we're not going to draw this. We're just going to go do, uh, make a circle, cut it as well as you can with your scissors. No complications here. See? Just a simple. So that's one. But I want, I think I want another one. Okay. And I'm cutting just another circle out of another color. Okay, so that's three circles. And it doesn't have to be really round either. You will see what we'll do. Okay. So now we are going to look for this part of our um, flower arrangement. We're going to work on this part, the stems or the foliage, or the green area of our vase. And for that, you can go for green or any other color combination you would like to. And I would like for you to just cut like these long strips of it. I just found a bit of green paper that looks really nice here. And look, it doesn't have to be straight, really well cut. It all depends on your style and how do you want to present it? Okay. I'm going to get another one here. Out of how many, Anna Melina, how many circles and strips would you say we need? Um, for this size of canvas and for now, let's get about three or four different colors. So I said, this is the base I'm going to be using for this um, composition. <clears throat> and the stems will have to go behind the base, obviously. So this is what we're going to calculate. We're not going to go um, beyond the, bo the border so of the base. We're just going to stay in to create um, and place the foliage of these um, flowers. So here I go. More glue. 
So my base will be here, and I'm gonna go um, make the flowers on this um, upper part of the canvas. I'm gonna just throw a couple of these over here. And, and then I'm gonna use another color. And this time, I'm going to uh, make a short here, and then uh, another one on another direction here. And then let this be this way. And we'll cut it, and we can move it to this direction. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Another one, there. You see how you just build some foliage and then again, foliage is never really straight or perfect or anything like that. So just throw it in there. Have some license, you are the artist here, okay? Now, when you um, cut these um, kind of a stripes out of magazine, they get these little wrinkles, just use your finger, not to avoid the wrinkles, but to make sure it is really, really um, glued on the canvas. You don't want any loose pieces there that then later will come up. So use your finger to make it settle down a little bit. Yep, I think that will be cute. Okay. okay. I am going to look for something, um, another color that I would like to introduce here, but in the meantime, I want you to get one of your circles. Let me use this one. This is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna just create a spiral here. So we're gonna cut the first one. It should look like this. It doesn't really um, work for the things we want. So we're gonna do it again. So the first time, don't cut it really thin, make it a little thick. So you can go in for a second time. And then we're gonna do this. I'm trying not to put my fingers in the middle of the screen so you can all look. Yeah, and we can, can see really, really clearly. Thank you, Anna Melina. Okay. You can just go once again in the middle of this circle. Uh, let me tell you. you get to the end. There you go. Now we have two. See? But this is the one I want. You can even take this off. And then this is a bigger one, see? That's what we're doing. So now I'm going to randomly throw this there. Any place, let's say over here. I'm gonna make this huge. Mm. And you know what, I'm gonna cut it here and I'm gonna do this just here and then find this piece mm -hmm. and then you're gonna do this. And again, see how I didn't care where the circle continued, which one belongs to what, nothing, just random. 
You say, I like this. So just put it there. And then we're gonna do another one here. Half a circle is fine. And then these I just came to have to so put it in there. Okay. Okay. And I do have another little one, so I'm gonna treat this one too. Same situation. So I'm gonna throw it in here. And then I ended up with this one that I'm gonna just throw in here. So you're really creating some depth by overlapping those spirals. That's a good way to say it, Catherine. Yes, overlap and then um, just play with the shapes. We're gonna have two flowers here. Okay. Well, I'll just say as someone who just used spirals in another collage of my own, um, she's right about making that first cut thick because if you make it too thin, it gets to be really challenging trying to cut the second spiral. Yes. Yes. I, ended up, I was doing really big ones and it was uh, it's interesting how technical that gets. Uh, and you can do it both ways. You can do it really thin and interrupt it too, cut it can use everything. Like, let's see. This I made a little thinner. I mm -hmm. mean, yes. So what if I just wanna use this part? Let's use this part, that'll be cute, look. Here, use this part here, here, either way. Okay, I think I'm going to make a little one on the other end. So I'm just cutting another very, very thin um, circle. This time very close to the edge. My cutting is making a very thin ribbon. Okay, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it here and it is another way to play uh, with these spiral balls. Uh, you just make them be the way you want, not the way they want. See? So force the paper in any way you want it to be because this is your collage and you are the artist. Then, and since I just introduced this other color, I'm going to um, move it and have something pink over here too. See? And then I'm gonna do it over here. Good. Just can place this circle here. Okay. So Anna Molina, over the years I've seen your work. And I noticed that you must always have an idea in your mind what the picture is going to be about before you start. Is that true? Um, I remember yeah. your oranges and the <laughs> circus and, uh, you know, so it seems like you have an idea 
I, 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 like? Yeah, to a certain point. And, and this is why I drew this today. Uh -huh. Because to a certain point, I had this idea. I wanted to have a vase. I wanted to have a stamp. And I wanted to play with the spirals. Uh -huh. Up to there is fine. But then um, the collage just takes off and just speaks by itself. So you just keep going and keep trying. Uh, there is, I don't think there is really a formula. Uh huh. But it, it, to your question, it does help to have an idea. Yes. Because now I want to do one more thing. Unfortunately, I am not happy with the colors I'm finding in my magazine, but maybe this one will help. Okay. So yeah, I found one that I like. So here it is, we're gonna do one more step, everybody. And I want a long strip of something, some bright color, something that, you know, you find that will just go with the colors that you pick for your collage. And I want you to just fold it. Um, we're gonna make little, little tiny rectangles. So, in order for me to save time, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna cut. They're very tiny, see? So little rectangles. And I have to drop them on a surface. So I'm sorry you won't see this. And I'm gonna just drop them on my magazine here and here. And I have a whole bunch of little rectangles, see? that are blue. So what I want to do now is go back here and get, a, you know, a couple here and there. Like if they were little petals here. Oops, this one came around. When things are tiny, they are a little bit tricky. Okay. But you see the idea? I want to go around here and make this one have petals. And because of that, see how I picked a color that is a little bit brighter than the ones on the back? And I'm gonna continue all the way around here. And here. And I think I'm happy with that one. Uh, maybe a little bit here. Okay, one more and then one more. Okay. So I'm gonna take another stripe of this color that I just found here. Not this lady, this color. It's kind of green. Anna Molina, can this medium be mixed with any other mediums? Um, yes. Uh, once it is dry, you can apply pastels. Um, you can do acrylics. Oh, acrylic is fantastic. Pastels, I have ex experimented with um, drawing uh, with pastels on top of it, but because I like to layer um, my collages with a lot of finish, the medium, then it will just brush the pastels away so not really recommended but but i do a lot of acrylic on my collages once they are dry okay here we we go again i'm okay. going just to cut little rectangles of this green one okay so I think 
I am happy with what I have. So now I'm going to position my vase, which is going to be this one. What do you draw on top with? I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay. Okay. See what I'm doing here? Just because I am the artist, I have the license to do it. <laughs> and I want to overpose this behind my vase, like the flower is in front. All right. There we go. How do you seal it after you draw on it? I, I'm sorry? How do you seal it? Do you spray some kind of sealer as a finish after you draw? Uh, the, the, the same um, glossy medium. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, this is magic. It will seal that paper like strong, but, strong. It will not go away. The colors don't fade. It's just fantastic. But you can't do that if you draw on it with pastel. If you draw with pastel, then it washes. But a little bit stays. It's not really horrible. Uh, let's see. See these surgeries I'm doing here? Okay. I think that's it. So now I want... I'm, I'm finding a little bit of a white, I mean, um, blue shade in a magazine because I want to create a little shadow here for this vase. So this I'm going to just work like this in a random shape. I don't know that this will work, but I do want to try it. Maybe this way. Yeah, not bad. Okay, let's see. I want to apply this over here. Maybe not. Maybe this one will do. So now I'm gonna add this over here so the vase will just sit on something. Good. Okay, one here, and then I'll do the same thing underneath here. Let's see if you can see. Just want to give this vase a little bit of background here. Cute. It's interesting how effective that is at grounding it. <laughs> it yeah. is. Really and now, okay. So, I wish it was dry. So, we're going to give it a minute. I think I'm fine with what I have here. I don't want to add any other thing except maybe, yeah. Let's don't waste this little bit that I found here because I think I have a perfect place put in. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, I'm cutting one last um, spiral that I'm going to drop next to the vase. Just pretending that, um, I don't know, a piece of flower just fell off, you know, like that. Okay, and also I wanted to just fill this area a little bit more. So I'm going to pretend it is really windy in here. <laughs> and this one is getting off the canvas, but coming back a little bit here. I'm going to break your bag. Uh-huh. Okay. Like this. Oh. 
there you go. I'm gonna cut it here. So a little bit more here. Um, using your fingers is the best. I think I'm happy with this. And while this dry a little bit, I'm just going to show you what do I mean by drawing on it. I really like to do this. Okay, so here is another collage and I'm gonna make it really close. So you see how I get just a Sharpie. Now, and I, I think I'm gonna do it again over here so you could see. See how I drew, there is a dot. So I color this inside the dot with acrylics uh, for your question, Sammy. And then I just drew a flower on it like That's this. You know, you just you just do another petal here, make another petal here. Wow. Make the vase. You know, look 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 at the. I pick this basket and then I drew another basket on top of it. So that's the next thing that I'm going to show you. And and you want um. This is another observation here, see? How I, I just draw on top of it when it is dry. And another technique that I wanna show you about drawing on top of collages is this. Just take a piece of tissue paper, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know what, I'm going to make a flower. And I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna draw a circle. I'm just pretending this is it. Can you see? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So here, I'm just gonna draw a circle here. This is a circle. And I don't know, let's draw a little things inside the circle. And then I'm going to pretend these were the petals that I drew in there. Remember how we cut the magazines and make this? Um, okay. And now, just with my fingers, I'm going to rip it off totally just around, you know, because I just want the painting. I just want the drawing. Just this, and I'm going to just throw it on top of this, and you'll see what happens. Let me see, make sure. I'm going to just throw it on top of this. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it becomes the collage. And then, and so on. You can just keep drawing and drawing. Let's play with this little um, flower that fell off, let's say. So we're just gonna draw this, why not? And then we take it off here. And I'm gonna place it here. See? Why not? And when it dries, it, it really blends. The, the canvas will absorb this tissue paper and it really blends. It's, it gets very personal because it has all your painting and drawing and cutting and everything on it. So let's say, um, Oh no, I don't like this drawing. What am I gonna do now? <laughs> it's really bad. I ruined my collage. How could I do this? Oh my God. Well, just place another point in the middle. And then you say, oh no, 
it's still, you know, it's, it's not what I wanted. It's not what I wanted. Well, then fix it somehow. It's your collage. See? Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> Look, just oh, fix it. So, it's so beautiful. You and did great. And I the more, that. the more layers and the more things you add and remove and reveal, the, the more personality your collages will have. Yeah. And then they will be very unique and they will be very fun to look at because there are many, many little things that you have been adding along your process. So once it is dry and you have finished your drawing and you are satisfied with it, <clears throat> just get some uh, dark acrylic or anything that matches. I usually do black, but you can paint the sides and make it look really nice and professional like this. Add this little thing over here so uh, they are ready to hang once you put them in the market, okay? I love dark sides because somehow you don't need a frame. They get really nice. You put them on your wall and they really stand out. <laughs>